Japanese government officials are highlighting the lingering impact of the Fukushima nuclear accident. They say radioactive material the reactors released four years ago is still Japan's biggest environmental problem. Staff at the Environment Ministry released their annual white paper. They say some parts of the country report high levels of radiation. They say communities near the crippled nuclear plant are suffering depopulation and the economic damage resulting from rumors and misinformation. The ministry staff propose ways to help those communities recover. They urge municipalities to generate more power from renewable sources. And they suggest using some of the revenue to support businesses that help evacuees move back. I mean, what the hell is wrong with these people? And if they're here at Walmart, where are their kids? I'm the same. Oh, of course. I should say something about Fukushima and also Chernobyl, but certainly now Fukushima and infertility. The, the, the truth is that infertility has been in, uh, increasing in the world for the last 30 or 40 years, probably because of all the radionuclides that, are, that people are exposed to originally from the weapons fallout, uh, not the global atmospheric testing, and then from Chernobyl, and now from Fukushima. And there are things that people there can do to, to try and minimize, minimize this. Uh, but the main thing is to get away from the radiation but, and because they, what they have to realize is that this, this is an invisible, uh, it's an invisible attack on, on the human race. It's something that will, will appear over the next 20, 30, 40 years and, and its cause will not really be investigated. So we also predict, I also predict, on, uh, as a result of this ECRR model, that there will be significant increases in infertility in Japan as a result of this accident and this is quite terrible and in, any, in many ways it's more terrible than the cancer in adults because it's, it, it's destroying children who, who could have been born but now will not be born and some of those who are going to be born from our studies in the Middle East will have horrifying deformities and, and will obviously in an advanced uh, country like Japan will be aborted uh, uh, you know, um, uh, clinically, clinically aborted before they get born, so the, the birth rate will fall. Um, what did the data show until now, before Fukushima? Oh yes, the the data has been showing that um, that the birth rate, uh, that the that the the, the 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 sperm count in men has has been falling drastically. Uh, there was a very important study done in Jerusalem a few years ago, which showed that Israeli men had had very low sperm count, and that over the previous ten years it had fallen by a significant amount. And the, and the authors of that study said that if it continued to fall at the same rate by the year 2020, that they would be totally infertile and the Israelis would, would have no more children. It's as bad as that. It's as bad as that. And we are so we're, we're now, as a result of Fukushima, introducing a huge load more of this stuff into the atmosphere. But I have to say that it will mostly affect the Japanese, as far as I can tell. It will mostly be a Japanese affair, but that doesn't make it any better. And where does the radiation come in Israel? Come from in Israel? In Israel, it comes from the uh, use of, of uranium weapons. The massive, massive, massive use of uranium weapons by the uh, by the various military um, invaders, I suppose you would call them, the U.S., the, the, the Allies, they call them, uh, used hundreds and maybe thousands of tons of uranium weapons. Um, there's a new weapon now which uses uranium, and we've made measurements in the hair of the mothers in Fallujah uh, and uh, mothers of children with congenital anomalies. Uh, and this study hasn't been published yet, but what we have found is significant man-made uranium in the hair of these mothers, which is almost certainly the cause of the congenital anomalies. And where you have congenital anomalies, of course, you also have infertility. It's just that with, with, in Fallujah, they, they don't have sufficient uh, medical methodology to, 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 to pick up these, these uh, deformities before they're bought. They don't have all the ultrasound stuff and so on. But in the West, they probably find these things and abort them early. So that's why we have these big increases. But the increases are associated with an environmental exposure to uranium. That's the point. And, and you have to remember that Fukushima contains probably 2,000 tons of uranium. 2,000 tons. Chernobyl had 200 tons, and 50 tons of it exploded. So, it, so all the things that Alexei Yablokov is talking about is a consequence of two, uh, 50 tons of uranium in Europe with a bit of with fission products, of course. But in Fukushima, there's more than that. There's, in principle, if the whole lot goes up, it's, it's a massive amount of uranium.
and are there some uh, long-term consequences after 20, uh, 30 years, 40 years? Uh, it doesn't go away. What, 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 what Alexei says is true, it doesn't go away. Um, what Rosa Goncharova showed here in her talk when she was studying the bank voles, the little animals that live in the Chernobyl zone, was that, that once you irradiate these, these, these creatures, and also human beings, Dubrova has shown this, you, you initiate a, pro a process called genomic instability. And then this is, this is like sort of throwing a switch. And what it does is it increases the genetic mutation rate, uh, quite apart from any mutation that the uranium causes or, or the radiation causes. That's a separate thing. This is like an automatic switch that is thrown at quite low doses. And then you pass this switch on to your children, and they pass it on to their children, and so on. And then with the bank rolls, uh, I know that they've studied the bank rolls and found that 22 generations have still got this switch. Now, I've studied the nuclear test veterans. Uh, these, are, these are the men who worked for the British Army uh, at the nuclear tests in the Pacific in the, in the 60s. And uh, I've studied their children and their grandchildren. And what we found was that the children of these test veterans, this is the British, British Nuclear Test Veteran Association, have about a, ten, a nine-fold excess of congenital malformations. But the extraordinary thing is that the grandchildren also have an eight-fold excess of congenital malformations. So the normal genetic idea that you, you pick off the weak and then it goes down and then you get the strong, and eventually, you know, this is the old nuclear idea of the, of the nuclear war, all the, we, we just have radiation-resistant people who survive. It's just not true. What happens is that it throws a big switch and everybody is affected. And it's, you're affected for generations and generations. So it's, it doesn't even matter if the uranium goes away. It doesn't matter if these radionuclides all decay. Because you've imprinted something on the human genome which is there forever. That's the danger. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you also. Yeah. Bob Alvarez, you've come out with a new report. What are your main findings? Well, uh, my report dealt with the vulnerabilities and hazards of stored spent fuel in, at uh, U.S. reactors in the United States. Uh, the United States uh, shares uh, similar designs, uh, reactor designs, a as, uh, as the Japanese reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi Station. Uh, and if you watch the accident unfold at, at the Daiichi Station, uh, the explosions basically showed you that the spent fuel pools uh, were exposed to the open sky. Uh, we are, in the United States are currently storing on the order of three to four, five times more radioactivity in our pools than in uh, Japan, and that the amount of radioactivity that we are storing in unsafe, vulnerable pools constitutes the largest concentrations of radioactivity on the planet. Uh, in 2008, my colleagues and I uh, issued a, a report, an in-depth study, uh, following the 9-11 attacks. We became very concerned about the vulnerability of these pools after those attacks, and we pointed out that if somebody or something were to cause the pool water to drain, uh, it would lead to a catastrophic radiological fire that could render an area uninhabitable far greater than that created by Chernobyl. Chernobyl created an area that's currently uh, uninhabitable uh, uh, that's approximately the size of half of the state of New Jersey. Uh, the fact of the matter is is that uh, we, we don't have a final resting place for these wastes. We've been trying to find a disposal site for these wastes for the last 55 years. And the reality is that these wastes are going to continue to accumulate at U.S. sites. And the reactor operators are going to continue to squeeze uh, uh, spent fuel into pools that have no nowhere near the level of protection of reactors. I mean, these pools are contained in structures that you would find at car dealers ships or big box stores. And um, for example, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission does not require the pools to have backup diesel generators.
generators if they lose off-site power. Uh, it's very important to keep the, the pools cool, uh, and uh, they, they do pose some very, very serious risks. They are, in my opinion, the most serious vulnerability of nuclear power that we have in the United States. And But what are the alternatives, uh, given the fact, obviously, that, that the United States government, like uh, uh, several other governments around the world, are determined to continue uh, to expand the use of nuclear power? What are the alternatives for storing the spent fuel? Well, I, I think that the there are different. There's a big difference between plans and reality. I think that the expansion of nuclear power in this country, if it occurs at all, is going to be rather modest and minor. We have to be concerned about the 104 reactors that are operating, uh, and the the generation of that material, and that we should be doing what Germany did 25 years ago, which is to thin out the pools, use them for the original purpose. They were intended, which is to uh, allow the spent fuel to cool off for several years, and then to place the the spent fuel into dry, hardened storage modules, uh, and uh, this significantly reduces the hazards uh, of these spent fuel pools. You say that what is recommended for expansion in the United States is relatively minor, Bob Alvarez. Um, but I think many were shocked that uh, President Obama has been pushing for something that presidents haven't pushed for for decades. I mean, the last nuclear power plant in this country built, what, some 30, 40 years ago. I mean, one, you've written about uh, President Obama before he was president getting a good deal of support from the nuclear industry. And he never said he wasn't going to push for this, but they've been rather quiet about it right now since the catastrophe in Japan? Well, I think a lot of this is rhetorical. Uh, I think that uh, I, I look at it as the equivalent of throwing nuclear candy at political supporters or, uh, or, or even political enemies who you're trying to win over. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that nuclear power is not going to have a chance in this country at all unless it has unfettered access to the United States Treasury. Uh, this is not going to happen. Uh, the House, for example, recently enacted the appropriations legislation for fiscal year 2012 and totally spurned Obama's request to expand loan guarantee authority. In other words, the U.S. government would guarantee the loans, but the loans themselves would come out of the U.S. Treasury. Uh, I don't think that the Congress right now has the stomach to uh, open up the Treasury for reactors that are going to cost on the order of $10 billion apiece. You also have to keep in mind that while he has been vocally supportive of nuclear power and has done things like try to seek expanded loan guarantee authority. He's also pulled the rug out from under the nuclear industry by canceling the Yucca Mountain disposal site. Uh, and so um, I think that we have to sort out, uh, as we do with a lot of things the president does, uh, the, the difference between what he says and what happens.